notes of these quiz because, <laughs> okay. So we're gonna go over quiz number one. So make sure you take good notes of these quizzes because you're going to see some of these questions again when you do the final exam. So uh, make sure you take good notes, okay? Share the screen. Okay, it looked like majority of the people did pretty well on the um, on the quiz. And so uh, only um, the only concern is that uh, we have a couple of people that turning the assignment in the wrong place. Okay, uh, instead of uh, turning into section one, you all turn a uh, couple of you turn into section two, and so make sure uh, I will go over that shortly. Hey Sam, okay. a real quick question. Yes, sir. Um. I know he's mostly doing tech one type stuff, but um, for all the assignments, maybe Mr. Fam will answer this as well. Do you turn in tech one, turn into tech one, and tech two, turn into tech two, or everybody turn into tech one? Mr. Fam, that's your question. Okay, on the in the electronic, turn in on the tech one. And where are you going to have tech two turn into? When you get the quiz on tech two. No, no, what I'm saying is, do you want everything turned into tech one or you want them separate? No, no, no. Only thing you're working on assignment on tech two and the quiz on tech two. So what he's saying that if you're doing a quiz that is concerning tech two, then it had to go into section two. If you're doing a quizzes that apply to section one, must everything, those quizzes must go into section one. Okay, okay, so gotcha. all the quizzes that pretty much most of the quizzes that you have been doing, which is from here, that is the, all these quizzes, these are based on tech one material. Cause they say right here, spring 22 uh, tech one. So if you download this one, it must go into section one. Okay, only from here, only from here. So for tech two, okay, that will go into section two. Are we clear? Oh, I got it. I was just wondering, like last time, he had us turn everything into Tech One. Okay. So everything you see here, when you click on Upload, do not put a tick mark on here. Okay. So this is at Section Two. Section Two is only applied for Tech Two only. We have a couple of students that are turning in. Uh, so uh, Miguel Diaz, uh, look like I cannot open your files. So uh, if you look at here. Uh, so Miguel, uh, Miguel Diaz, um, let me see, Mr. Diaz. Uh, yeah, we want to make sure, clarify to make sure that everybody turn in the right place because there's a lot of students and it's hard for me to keep track of everyone. Okay, uh, make sure you can put here, uh, you put, can put quiz one, but if you use the hashtag, I cannot open this file. Okay, I click on it and it bring me this and give me this error. So make sure when you name your when you name your file, don't put this hashtag on here. Okay, just put quiz one or something. Uh, if you want to add additional part part to it, just uh, don't use the hashtag. Okay, so make sure you do the quiz number one. Make sure you redo uh, upload it, rename it. Make sure not use the hashtag and then re-upload it to the website so I can open it up. Okay, and then we have a couple other student that is. Uh, let me see that is turning in the wrong place, uh, like I said, mainly uploading the wrong place. So Lawrence Aquino, uh, so and Giovanni Cisnero, uh, Booker, uh, uh, Booker Gall, Luke King and Alexander Sofa, uh, Sofa and Luis uh, Vargas. So make sure not to, uh, like I said, because there's a lot of things on here. So uh, like you put it way down here, which is, this is for tech two student. These are supposed to be tech two in section two and you put it in the section two. So make sure not to tick on that section when you upload it, make sure not to put tick there. Cause this is only for supposed to be for everything that they deal with DLAP. These are for tech two student. Okay, so section two only for te tech two student. Tech one, everybody that's applied to everyone here. Okay, so tech one, it goes here. So make sure you upload in tech one. So don't, when you upload it, don't put on, do not put a check mark on this part right here. Do not put on, uh, do not put a tick mark here. Okay, uh, check mark. Okay, just leave it blank and then just click upload. 
Okay, so now that we have that clear. Okay, so now I can go over the quiz. Okay, so quiz, um, so, so for number one, it said to add 250 times 10 to the negative six plus so one times 10 to negative three. No, 10 to negative six means 10 to the power negative six. Okay, so uh, pretty much uh, this one, the answer is supposed to be in scientific notation. So the answer and this one, it's going to be uh, A for apple for number one. And this is how you work it out. So 250 times 10 to negative six plus the quantity one times 10 to the pot and negative three. And so this one I'm going moving. Uh, so I'm going to move two decimal places to the, uh, to the left, uh, to the left. So one, two, three. So if I move it three here, I have to add three here. So this one go down to a negative three. This one here, the one, so this one is going negative three. Now negative three, I can keep it. And then after that, now I can look at the, oops, uh, let me see there. So, and then uh, and then I can fact out what is common. So I fact out 10 to the negative three, 10 to the negative three outside here. And that's leaving you whatever is inside the parentheses is 0 0.5, which is here. And plus the operator plus the 1.0. So that's why when you add them, it's 1.25 times 10 to the, the minus three. So the answer is A as an apple for number one. Okay, number two, subtract 400 times 10 to the third from uh, 2.0 times 10 to the sixth. Okay, so we want to do make sure that we uh, make sure we we'll, we make sure we use at the same factor form. So if we look at the so and this one is 10 to the third and this is 10 to the sixth. So I convert it to the 10 to the three and so it's 10 to the three. So that, that way I can factor out. So that's 2000. Uh, so factor that 10 to three out. So that's 2000 minus 400. So that's give you 600, uh, 1600, okay? And that's times 10 to the third, okay? So the answer is C as in uh, cat for number two. Number three, divide 500 times 10 to the fifth by 20 uh, times by the quantity 25 times 10 to the two. Okay, so you're doing the same thing. Now, when you're doing the dividing, you're going to be subtracting. So when you 10 to the five and 10 to two, you're going to be, so you move in there. So it's five minus the two here. Okay, so 10 will be the subtraction and you get the 500 divided by the 25. Okay, so that's give you a 20 and then uh, so 10 raised to the quantity five minus two. So that's that three, so 10 to the third. So the answer is B as in Bob for number three. So any question number one, two or three? I have a question. Yes, Vanessa. So I see you um, for the exponents in number two, you um. You you um you have to match exponents and I understand that but you know oh wait never mind I'm sorry about that never mind okay, okay. so we look at the sixteen hundred so this is this is the only one that's sixteen hundred times ten to the third okay all right any other question number one two or three okay so no question. Okay, so number four, uh, so that's it's converting 22 milliamps to microamps. Okay, so we got 10, uh, 22 milliamps. Uh, so that's the same thing as 22 times 10 to the third microamps or uh, 22,000 microamps. So 10 to the three, same thing as represent three zeros after the 22, so one, two, three microamps. So we're looking at, so we got the 22 to the, so the answer is A is correct as well as C. So the overall correct answer would be the answer D as in David for number four. Okay, number five, convert 1.5 kilo ohms to ohms. Okay, so 1.5 kilo ohms is the same thing as, uh, so that's the, Okay, so K is represent 10 to the 10 to the three. So 1.5 times 10 to the three ohms. Uh, or you can convert it all the way. So either way. So the only one that matches with this one is the answer is B as in Bob for number five. Okay. 
Number six, convert 1500 Hertz to kilohertz. So 1500 Hertz. And so uh, 1500 Hertz now in order, uh, now kilo is 10 to three. Uh, so 10 to negative three would undo this one. So therefore 1500. So this would be another way of writing it out or you can write 1.5 uh, kilohertz. Okay, so look at one of the answer is, so the only one that matches one of these answer is C as in cat for number six. So any question number four, five or six. Um, forgive me if this is a really self-explanatory question, but yeah. uh, whenever converting, you basically just multiply by 10 to the third power. And if you're converting down, you would divide by or multiply by 10 to the negative third power. Yes, so you want to do it just from like from the handout where you can, mm -hmm. uh, from the classroom handout. So uh, from the handout that from the class, so you can use uh, this handout to help you to do converting. So uh, yeah, you mainly it's going to be factored off by a thousand main, mainly. So either a thousand smaller, a thousand bigger. Uh, let me see, you're going to be here 10 to the three. So by a thousand factor of thousand between the base unit and either you go to kill or mil milli, okay. And just follow here and just do some of these practice exercises. Okay. And then there's plenty of resources on Google. You can Google how to do scientific notations and they'll teach you more how to convert the, those number into scientific notations. Okay, let me minimize that one the way, okay. All right, any question number four, five, or six? Okay. All right, so next one, uh, number seven. Okay, number seven, resistant and current are, okay, so we applying the Ohm's law. So, uh, and then we need to look at the current and uh, resistant. So current and resistant uh, relationship would be this one here. Okay, so they're, they're inverse proportional because if you increase the resistance, you will decrease the current. So the answer is C as in cat for number seven. Okay, so, uh, and then if you increase the, res uh, so if you decrease the resistance, you will increase the current. Okay, so the inverse relationship, either one goes up, the other one goes down or vice versa. Okay, number eight, if the resistance in a circuit is double and the voltage remains the same, the current is uh, pretty much half. Okay, so I equals, uh, so we applying the Ohm's law, I equals VR. So I'll say R is equals two or two times, uh, two times R. Then I equals V divided by two. Therefore, the current is half because that's represent two here, uh, represent one here. So therefore it's one ha uh, half. Okay, so the answer is A as an apple for number eight. Number nine, a sine wave with a 20 peak to peak has RMS value of, okay, so the answer here, number nine is B as in uh, Bob for 7.07 uh, .07 VRMS. Okay, so what you do, VRMS is equal to, and then we got this one is in peak to peak. So in order to calculate, we have to divide this by two because uh, we only look at, we need just the peak Part. So therefore you got 20 divided by two times the, uh, the, the ratio of the 0 0.707, okay? And you, so this 20 divided by two, that would give you 10 uh, V peak and times the 0 0.707, that's how you get 7.07 .07 VRMS, okay? So the answer is B as in Bob for number nine, okay? Any question number seven, eight or nine? Okay, no question. Yeah. So I got a question for number nine. Okay. Is the 0 0.707, where, does, where can I find that or how did, why is that? Uh, this is like a constant. It's almost like pi. Like pi, you know that uh, pi, you, everybody knows that to use the value of 3.16. So yeah, this one, the, uh, this one they did a calculation. Uh, um, they did a calculation, the engineer that did the calculation and that the constant value that we all use to convert the something that is in peak to peak to a VRMS value. No, 
peak to peak, where did, where does that when that is uh, coming? Where yeah, did they that, have to go back into the handout? Right, you got uh, this one right here. You got this okay, one. Okay, okay. You got AC signal, so you. I thought so that was the, okay. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah, so you have this one right here. It, it explained to you on the slide number two on the first handout. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Okay. So number four. Okay. Determine the resistance uh, of the resistor having the color codes. Okay. So we got a brown, green, yellow, silver. Okay. So brown represent one, green represent five, yellow equals four, and silver is going to be plus minus 10%. Okay. So this is represent your tolerance and this is your value on your color band. Okay. So there's one five, okay, and this is the yellow represent a multiplier. So that's ten to the fourth ohm, plus or minus ten percent. So you uh, so you do that. And so I multiply by, so multiply that by ten in order to get this one to ten to the third, and so I can convert ten to the third to kilo ohm. Okay, so one hundred and fifty kilo ohm plus or minus ten percent. So the answer is B as in Bob for number ten. Number 11, determine the total resistance from A to B. Okay, so this is represent a parallel circuit. So parallel circuit, you can apply the formulas called product over sum. Okay, so this is a product, uh, R1 times R2, okay, over the sum, which is uh, over the quantity R1 plus R2, okay? So you got 500, uh, so 50 ohms times 200 ohms divided by the quantity 50 ohms plus 200 ohms. And so if you multiply these two together in the numerator, you get uh, 10,000 ohms and divided by the uh, this addition. So that's 250 ohms. So if you take 10,000 divided by 250, you get 40, uh, 40 ohms. Okay, so the answer is C as in cat for number 11. And we know according to parallel circuit is that, that in the, if you look at the uh, look at the the resistor in parallel, the 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 equivalent value would be smaller than the smallest resistance in this parallel circuit. So the smallest is fifty. So something has to be smaller than fifty. So smaller than a fifty is the forty is the only one that makes sense. Okay. So any question number ten or eleven. All right, yeah, I got a question for the silver. I didn't see the negative positive 10% on the chart. Uh, yeah, usually they, they leave it off, but uh, it means that's what it means. You got on the negative, that means on the lower, uh, in the lower cutoff side, and then uh, the positive is going to be on the upper cutoff side, okay? So yeah, uh, this says yeah. there was four of them in this, yeah. Yeah, uh, resistant, uh, resistant right here. Okay, so we got this one. So we got this uh, general purpose. So you got the tolerances here. Okay. And you could see uh, silver right here. Uh, the tolerance at the fourth band, it's plus or minus 10%. Okay. Yeah, so. So that's the fourth band. So if we look at the uh, this one, one, two, three, four. Four is a uh, silver. It's plus or minus ten percent. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Thank very you. good. All right. You're welcome. Okay. Anything else? Any question on ten on eleven? All right. Okay. Number twelve. Okay. Number 12, determine the total resistance from uh, A to B. Okay, so we got three, three is resistor in parallel. Okay, so we apply the equivalent formula. So uh, that means R1 is parallel with R2 is parallel with R3. So therefore the R equivalent is one divided by the quantity one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3. You put that into uh, you and then that's one over 50 divided by 150. And if you want to do uh, do this calculation, so one plus one plus one, that would be a three. And then the denominator would keep the 50. So, and then this is represent inverting over. So therefore, flip over the 50 become numerator, and the 
the three become a denominator. So 50 divided by three, that yields 16.7 ohms. Okay, so the answer is C as in cat for number 12. Okay, for 13, for the circuit shown, solve for the total resistance. Okay, so, uh, okay, total resistance for circuit, series circuit. So this is a series circuit. Okay, so that's a thing between the two. This is a parallel circuit. This is a series circuit. So in series circuit, we just add the resistance together all across. So R1 plus R2 plus R3. So therefore 50, uh, 20 plus 40 plus 30, that's 90 ohms. Okay, so the answer is A as an apple for number 13. Okay, 14 for the circuit shown, solve for the total current, okay? So total current, I equal E divided by R total, okay? So we got E is 120 volt divided by 90 ohms that we calculate on 13, and that would yield 1.33 amps. So the answer is B as in Bob for number 14. Okay, any question number 12, 13, or 14? Okay, no question, next set. Okay, for the circuit shown, calculate voltage across R1. Okay, so R1 is here. Okay, R2, R3. Now we can use these, uh, we can use the, uh, this formula, or we can, you can also use the current formula. Uh, you can use the current, since you have the current here, take this current, multiply against this value, it will be working the same way. Uh, okay, so if you take in 1.33 times the 20, it's come to about, about 26.6 volt, or you can apply this way, okay? And this is what, uh, this is one of the methods, and the other methods is use the current to calculate it. Okay, so the answer is C as in uh, cat for number 15, okay? Number 16 to find, uh, calculate the voltage across R2. R2 is over 40 ohms. So if you take 1.33 times 40, uh, come uh, approximately about 53.3 volt. So the answer is B as in Bob for number 16. Number 17 for the circuit showing calculate voltage across R3 or VR3. So this is that uh, VR3. So if we take 30 times 1.33, it will comes out about 40 volt or 39.999. So the answer is A as an apple for number 17. So any question number 15, 16, or 17? Um, I have one question on number 17. Um, okay. Because when I did the, the math on that, it works out to exactly 40 volts, right? So yeah. I guess I chose none of the above because 39.9 is not 40. I mean, yeah. the argument could be made that 39.9999999 is, you know, with the infinite nines is 40, but that's not how I read the question. Yeah. So anything, yeah, when you're doing this uh, calculation, it's going to be uh, uh, depending on uh, how they calculate it, whether they round it off the number or not. But uh, 40 and this one is approximately equal, close enough. I think you did pretty well, Tim, uh, on the on the quiz, and so yeah, I don't, yeah, you you didn't uh, you didn't have any trouble, so that's not a big concern. That's you know, if you're getting close to it, that's that's close enough. Okay. Mr. Roger, all, all the time we have the tolerance. We cannot cannot get exactly the number. Yeah, because you can, uh, you know, some people prefer to round up the number and some people like to keep the number as is. Uh, so if I keep uh, the number as is, and then if you do calculate, yeah, it does, uh, comes up to about 40. But if you round off the current from, from previous step, which is here uh, from this step, which is the 1.33, then you take this one, multiply this one. That's why you got the uh, 39.9. Okay, so you got a little bit. Exactly, 39.9. Okay, so depending on you use the current or you use the, for, the formula directly. So that's pretty close. So 15, 16, 17. As long as you look at the number, it's like pretty close and that's pretty close enough. Uh, that's pretty good. And we'll go with that, okay? For, for the future, just make sure that as long as it's pretty close, then you just accept that, that as the answer. Okay. 
Okay. You know, we are exact because we do a lot of rounding off and different people approach it differently. Okay. Yes, All right. Yeah, yes. To, just to be analytically fair, 15 are exact compared to 17. Correct. Like I said, depending uh no. Like I said, if you take this and do this one and calculate it by applying this, yes, you will get 26.6. .6. But if you use the, the rounding off of the 1.33, uh, okay, so if you take the 1.33, yeah, it will become exactly 2.6, okay? If you take this one, multiply by, if you take in this one, multiply, uh, let me see, take my 1.33 times 30, that's give you exactly 39.9. So that's why I said, depending if you, if you round it, your current up here, if you got 120 divided by 90, so the answer is 1.33333, infinitely three. And so that's why if you use that exact number and then you multiply against the 30, yes, you will get exactly 40. Okay, because you got infinite three repeating. And, so uh, yeah, so that's, this is close enough, okay? Just for future reference, this is just a quiz. It's the first time, uh, so you wanna, uh, you may not know the exact way to, uh, you know, you interpret differently from the instructor, but, you know, but for the future, anything that's getting close to the exact answer, that's close, that's good enough, okay? Just choose the one that's closer. Okay, unless it's not the number is way out of, you know, if they said only three volt here and and 10 volt, okay, then we know that is completely none of the above because that's way out of, that's way out of range. Okay. Okay, for 18, for the circuit show and calculate the power dissipate by R3. So R3 is here. So we know that VR3 was 40 volt and R3 is 30 ohm. So we're going, Power equals V times, uh, so current times voltage or current squared times resistance or voltage squared divided by resistance. So I'm going to apply this one here. So that's why it's going to be using here. Uh, so it's going to be 40 volt square divided by 30. So that's going to be 1600 divided by 30, give you 53.3 watt. Okay, so the answer is C as in cat for, for number 18. Okay, any question on number 18? Okay, all right, look like uh, everyone's pretty good then. Okay, so no question at all. Good. Okay. Just so like I said, just make sure you uh, make sure you help, help me uh, help me out and make sure you upload all the assignment into the right appropriate places and don't just keep on uploading to all the section one and section two. It's uh, way too much work. Okay. There's too, way too many students to keep track of. Okay. All right. So back to you, Mr. Pham. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay. Hello, everyone. Okay. Hello. Okay, I start it. continuing. Try to finish DC for today. Do you have any question, anything to me? If it not, let me using my iPad. Okay, last time we up to this point. That means you get a parallel circuitry. Easy to recognize the parallel circuit. That means the current through its resistor will be different. Okay. And the big question is, how come for either series circuit or parallel circuit, we need to calculate the total resistance? Or in parallel, they say this equivalent, same thing, total. 
So now, before we can go to that point, I'm telling you when you get that parallel register, you want to combine it. I want to do a three into only one register, that's a total or equivalent. Then you must be using this formula. Okay. And especially if you get only two register in parallel, then you can use in that formula. I want time R2 divide R1 plus R2. Okay. And then the example here, they given you one, two, three parallel. And I already gave you the answer. And make sure you exercise it, you get the same answer to me. Okay. And the next one here. For this, they want the total resistance. They looking from here. That means looking from this point to this point. So you can see I want to do parallel. You can combine. You get one. R3, R4 parallel. Okay. You can combine R3 times R4. Divide R3 plus R4. Get another one. Then two new one parallel. Okay. Then you calculate it. The answer will be at all. You need to do it, okay? To make sure you get the right answer. And another one, same thing. Okay, they want the total resistance from here to here. That one, that one parallel to combine it. That one, that one co parallel combine it. And both, they will be two new parallel. And the answer will be 50 ohm. Okay, the next one here, who get the answer, tell me. That's 1.9 kilo ohms. Okay, you get 1.9. Anyone get the same? So that I want to get the answer for someone mm -hmm. it's not done. Or well, someone cannot get that answer. Okay. If no objection, I suppose to be one by nine. Okay, now, current divider. You understand in the series circuitry, you get the law they call voltage divider. Voltage divider law using to calculate the voltage. They don't have a current divider in the series, the region A. The current in the series circuitry will be the same through on up the resistor in series. However, in parallel, the current will be different in on each resistor. So that's why they get current divided law. So that is the total current 20 milliamp. Now, if you want to calculate the I1 or I2, then you have to apply this formula. I1 equal R2 divide to R1 plus R2 time I total. Okay. That's just a formula. We not make it up. We have to follow it. If you get a question, stop me, okay? Okay, for this parallel circuitry here, okay? So what they want? 
thô tông rồi giết tình ý gì phải chu tham hết đi vai chu lớp hết ok yeah uh, for the voltage divider law does that only work if there's two resistors only theory not parallel okay okay now I go in on that one, try to explain to you. How come we need to calculate the total resistance or equivalent resistance? Either way. You need the uh, total resistance to find the uh, current, right? Or the voltage? Okay. My question is how come? Do we need to calculate the total resistance? To find the total current. Well, that's the thing is they ask you to, to do it and you know how to do it. My question is how do we need it? For example, on that one, you get R equivalent or total. They will be R1. Time uh, to. I want blood. Uh, to. If they are asking you to calculate the total resistance, that's what you're using that formula. Okay, now my question is for this circuitry, I want to calculate the total resistance. Right here. How do I do it? You would uh, divide 36 volts by 1.6, right? That means you said, uh, equivalent is 1.6, right? Yeah. I agree. I agree with you. Now, I try to explain to you. They want to gain this circuitry. You are not a circuit. Blood minus E. And that will be R equivalent. Then the current I total here. And now you can using um, law I total equal E divide R equivalent. That's how we get I total. Right here. Okay, any question? Now, number C, they want to calculate the power delivery by the voltage source. Basically, for the power, you get three formula. V time I. I square. Or P equal V square over ah so they want the point power delivery by 36 volt so you get the voltage and a high t high total you can calculate the power delivery to the circuitry 
that will be E time I D. And then they want to calculate the I1, I2 using the voltage current divider. I don't care. You know that the 36 volt over R1. You get the two kilo ohm. Easy to calculate the I1. We don't have to using the current divider. Okay? So I1 will be 36 divide two. Okay, and I2 will be 36 divided to 8 kilo ohm. That's more easier than using current divider. And also they want to calculate the power dissipate on R1. Okay, then you can using I1 square. The thing is that the I one here, time R1. Or if power for R2 will be I2 square time R2. We already calculated for you. Any question on this circuitry and, any, and on the calculation? Yeah, I have a question on A. Number eight uh, or one. It says right here, uh, R total, the equation is R total R1 times R2 uh, divided by R2 times R2 again. Is that? No, 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 no. You get your resistor. Yeah. The formula will be R1 times R2 divide R1 blood R2. Plus R2, okay. Instead, you have to using the formula one over one over R1 plus one over R2. So you don't have to using that. You can using quickly by R1 times R2, divide R1 plus R2. That only apply for two register in parallel. Okay, I was just um, confused because on A it says uh, divide by R2 and R2 was listed twice. So that's why, where I was confused. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Now, I have a, sorry, I have a quick question. What, on what? On um, D. D. Is it just because it's asking us to use current divider rule that we have to do it that way because couldn't we just divide E by R1 and R2 to find I1 and I2? Yeah, no. you only think we want the answer. Yeah. Doesn't matter which way you can get. However, if you go to the college, then you must be follow it exactly. That means using current divider law. Okay, gotcha, thank you. Okay, yeah. Now, this is a really important to everyone. You understand uh, you want to measure the wounded or measure the current, okay? Then you're using that one we call a meter, DMM, okay? Just an own one type, not a new one. However, they work in the same thing. This one, they want to measure the voltage from point C, okay? If they say point C, that means the other side of the meter have to be go to the route, okay? That is the measure the voltage. Now, the other one, they want to measure the current. Okay. If you want to measure the current, then you must be let the current flow into the meter, then going back. 
Natalie telling you, you have to broken the wire here. Right. Okay. That never happened. The thing is, when you go to working, you want to fix the circuit more. When you broke, try to broken the circuitry, that means you already damaged the wall. They not allowed. So that's why, normally at work you never measure the current. You can working on the lab, MCM seven. Okay, and the simulation, that would be fine. However, real circuitry, you cannot. They not allow you to broken the, the wire in the circuitry. However, you must know the way how to measure the color. That will be telling you, you must be allowed this current go to the meter. Okay? Then after that, they go to the register right here. That is how to measure the color. Any question? The thing is when you go into the lab, that's what you need to do. They ask you measure the voltage, they ask you measure the current. The system already designed, so you still can measure the current without damage the circuitry. You're talking about real world versus classroom. Right. In real the real world, world, in the real world, you, you take the voltage reading and you divide by the resistance to get the current. But, exactly. but breaking the circuit is only while we're here in school in the classroom. If we're on a job, we don't break the circuit. Exactly. Even that, when you do a left volt, you're not breaking any wire. They already designed a way for you to measure the current without damage the circuitry. So that's why normally in at work, they not telling you measure the current. If they want the current, easy way, they measure the voltage and that voltage divide to the resistor, you get the current, okay? Any question? Okay, this is a meter normally company using. We're using in the class. You see that, this is a meter here, okay? You can measure the voltage, that's a DC, that's a AC, okay? You can measure the resistance, you can measure the capacitor, okay? You can measure the diode, current, okay? DCAC. Only thing is, when you want to measure the voltage, high side, the lead of the meter connect here. Low side connect to the common. Common mean drought. Okay. However, if you want to measure the current, the lead here must be moved to the other side. Okay. This is for the rain for 400 milliamp. If the current higher, you can connect you here, but cannot keep at the voltage here they will be cooked the fuel inside 
the meter. That's a very important. When they telling you make it a color, the red lid must be moving to this side here. Common still the same. Any question? Okay, now let's go to the real world. First thing, they want to measure the voltage at VC. Okay. So, DMM high. and DMM low. Where do we connect you? If I given you the meter, I telling you, okay, I want to measure the VC. Now, how do we connect it for using the DMM? We are high side with of the DMM connect you. DMM high to C, point C. Point C, correct. DMM, DMM low to ground. Exactly. Okay. So. They want to measure the voltage across here. Okay, that means VR2. If we're looking into the circuitry, VR2 means the voltage from the C to D. They will be V equal VCD. Same thing, VC minus VD. That's a very, very basic. We are wanted across the R2. That means the wanted from C to the D. And VCD must be equal VC minus VD. Okay, now DMM high. DMM low, where we connect you. High to C and low to D. High to C, low to D, perfect. If you get a question, just let me know. Make sure it's clear for everyone. The thing is sooner or later, you must be doing. And that has to be no problem for technician. Okay, any question on that? So now you understand, if I want to measure the voltage across the R1, then the meter will be connect high side to B, low side to C. If I said I want the voltage at point B, Then the meter high side connect to B and the low side 
not be connect to common to route. Got a question. So the plus V1 minus or the negative V3 plus, is there, a, is there a difference between those two? You're talking about single point B, right? Yes. When they say only single point, the meter need two point. Every time they say, I want measure at B, then you must be understanding the northern, another side of the meter must be go to the common. Same thing I say, okay, I want the voltage at the point C. Then the high side meter connect to C, but the low side must be common, must be wrong. Got it. So that's the way the, the how it's trapped, the electricity is traveling all the way around back to A. Got it. Okay, now. That is talking about measure the voltage. Okay. At a single point, all the voltage across the resistor. That's a different way. And I'm not talking about measure the current. If you want to measure the current for this circuitry, you have to broken the wire, either here or here, doesn't matter. The thing is they get only one current, but that never happened in the real world. You can, we can do it in the, our lab sit up. The thing is they already know the way they design in order you can broken the wire without damage to the circuitry. Okay, now we're using the meter to measure the AC. This is the AC. And you get the V peak. Or V peak to peak. That's what the signal will be see on the oscilloscope. Okay? Not on the meter. The meter not display the signal. If you want your meter can display like oscilloscope, the cost of the meter will be more and more. So, they're telling you, UDMM to measure AC voltage or the current. Only voltage you can get, that will be VIMF or IIMF, not VP to pick or VP. So when you're using your meter, to measure the voltage of the sideway. Only thing you can get is V, uh, MF. Okay. And now if they asking for V pick or pick to pick, then you have to using the formula to convert it. Okay. V pick, equal 0.7 time VIMF, sorry, just a minute.
แต่พยายามแม่พี่อาร์ยามาสอีกวนเยอะไปเซฟันเยอะไปเซฟันทปอวีปกอีกวนพี่อาร์ยามาสอีกวัยเยอะไปเซฟันเยอะไปเซฟันโอเคเมื่อคุณเอียงจากเ To measure the AC, only voltage you are able to get will be V I M S. If you want V peak, then you have to using the formula to converting to V peak. When you get a V peak, you can calculate E G to for the voltage V peak to peak. That means just two two times. v p that's a very basic thing technician must to know i think that sometimes interview they can ask you a trick question they can ask you can i we using the meter to measure the v p of the signal The answer will be no. Meter cannot measure the VP or P to P. But let them know. We can measure the VIM X, and using the formula to calculate the VP or VP to P. So, anything clear for your guy? Hey, Mr. Pham, just to make clear, a uh, BRMS in the words VAC is the same thing, correct? Exactly. Thank you, Mr. Spit. Sometimes they say VAC. That's the same V. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's why you can see. Uh, Equipment you bought it in the back. They say 110 VAC. Okay, that means VI a bit. Okay, any question? Okay, so this one I'm not trying to explain to you. They measure the color. Okay, you can look at it. Okay, so basically that will be done. Basic DC. We still can get a little more detail on some, but at this time we don't need it. For example, talking about superposition theory, talking about Thévenin, okay, equivalent, okay, but it's not at the top. That is very basic. The technician support to know. So, any question, anything? Okay, so basically you understand this week you get lecture on Monday, Tuesday. On Wednesday, on text you in my Zoom only. And that will be happen the same next week. Okay, and after next week, we'll see what they will be changing, then we'll be let you know. If they give a lot more left time, then we can open the lab for 
Chút đề quen đề tốt đề Friday. Right now, the lab on the open when the third day and Friday. So basically depend on what will be happen on after next week. And also make sure for vaccinate you better upload your status to the city. Will it still be hybrid? For the COVID-19. If you go into, okay, the website, they get, uh, you can go a little down, they're telling you, upload the vaccine. So you can be able to get into the lab. We just following whoever CT sent to us. They say, okay, then we'll be scheduled for you. And again, in the lab, we open from three to seven. And then we'll be scheduled for students from three to five and the students from five to seven. So depending on your time. I'm sorry, can you say that again? So that will be make it up after they allow back to the class after next week. Okay. Mr. Fran? Yes, sir. So, so basically what, what you're saying, uh, the, the continuation of the semester should be scheduled two lecture, three lab? Is that a- well, Now, what I think, that means you get two day lecture and three day for the lab. Are they holding a- uh, restriction or a uh, some type of class attendance requirement for the week whether it be a two day requirement or a three day requirement before a drop no they don't care and basically i don't care either thank you i really care if the people continuing in the program you need to do your assignment. You need to do the quiz. Only thing is like, you know, the student in tech two, they already passed through the last semester. Then I expect the only thing they can do the quiz, not the assignment. I don't care. And the hour also, I'm not making the hour at this time. They just give it to students a certain hour. That means this semester they give every student 265 hour, for example. Not mine. They did everything. To me, you done for your theories and also for your lab. See the take one or take two, and take two. You get a completion certification. I don't care about the hour. Okay. 
the thing at this time, some student get over about, let's say, two more years in the program, still cannot get through. The reason is they close the lab. Now they open. We'll see what happened after next week. If they given me a little more time, then the lab could be open five days a week or four days a week. For now, we get only three days. The thing is you got already done for lecture. Only thing you get to complete for your lab in order to complete the program. I hope they can go in back to normal, but I couldn't believe it. I don't know when. Maybe up to the time I'm retired. Mr. Pam, you ain't never gonna retire. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, I didn't see uh, the lady on tech show. Mr. Smith, you know who? The lady from tech, oh, you mean like Ku, Ku Me or something? Ku Me. I don't know. I didn't see her uh, in the in the Zoom. She, she did very good at the time. Yeah. Hey, that's, hey, Mr. Pham, so that's kind of like a problem because you got people who typically they should be able to finish the program in a little over a year. And, and now you got people that's like way like a year and a half because they haven't been able to get the labs. So since they haven't been able to get the labs, that's holding them back from getting the uh, certificate. Yeah, the thing is for any student coming in, in let's see, 2019, we'll be gonna get a certificate very soon. Only thing you're waiting for the student, the employees in the office coming back to work right now. They work online. They cannot do anything. As soon as at least they're going back to the office. So that's why they're able to bring the certificate and also able to for the dean to sign, okay? I try that the best. We'll see what happens. Okay, make sure you download, okay, the new handout dialogue. Now we go into the electronic. If we get the time, we can get try to get on the theory done. Then we get more time to helping you to review everything. Okay? So today we start with the diode. Now this is the one we already telling you at the beginning. This is a sideway, okay? And basically, you see that this will be time. That means the time domain. Different from this one. This one, you can see distance, okay? domain, but we deal with the time domain. That's what you see this signal display on the oscilloscope, okay? And this is what we call a positive alternation, negative alternation. 
and from here to here, that a one complete cycle. Okay, and this is just a basic definition. What is a cycle? One complete occurrence of repeating wave, periodic signal that at one positive and one negative alternation of a side wave. What is the frequency, the number of cycle of the signal occur in one second? Remember, try to memorize the definition, okay? Period. The time distance between two similar position on a periodic wave. Wavelength. Okay, this is a wavelength right here. When you're learning about radio frequency, then you deal with the wavelength. Wavelength, that means the distance travel by electromagnetic way, radio way, during one period. And the wavelength lambda will be calculated by this formula, okay? Basically, you can see the way of the radio transfer over the air, okay? So they can calculate the wavelength. Now, when you go through that thing, we already telling you everything, okay? However, I telling you this is a, exactly what will be displayed on the oscilloscope, okay? So now you can see from the bottom here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means they get eight division for the voltage, okay? And on the other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They get the ten division, okay, for the time. So, when you look in signal here, this way on the scope, they want to say, I want to know what the VP, okay? So this is a zero right here. Then you can get one division, two division, three division. Three division and eight division will be three volt. Then you get six volt peak and from peak to peak you can get one two three four five six okay six division each, each division will be three volt each division will be one volt okay that means six volt and v peak will be three volt everything I already given to you here, okay? If you want to calculate VIMF, you know how to do calculation, okay? And now if they want the period, one cycle, then you start from here. Go up and now go up again to this point, complete one cycle. And you have to see how many divisions one, two, three, four, five, six, a half and a half, seven. Seven division for the time. And they say one millisecond for one division. That will be telling you the period will be equal one millisecond times seven division you get seven milliseconds. Now, if you want to calculate the frequency, you have to use the formula F equal one over T. 
that coming up what 142.8 huh okay the oscilloscope cannot measure the frequency remember that only thing they can measure the time measure the period you want the frequency you have to using the formula okay however If you pay more to buy the oscilloscope and they will be telling you the frequency, you don't have to do calculation. I mean, they can measure the frequency. They're using this formula in the oscilloscope to calculate it and they're telling you frequency. Like an oscilloscope at the lab in this program, we bought the new. So you can using that scope to measure the V, um, pitch to pitch, measure the V pitch, measure V I'm at, anything we need, okay? Mr. Oh, Chairman, quick question. Yeah. I, I noticed, <clears throat> excuse me, the V average, we, we rarely use that, correct? V what? V average, the 0 0.637. Yeah, right, yeah. We hardly yeah. don't we, we hardly don't use that too much. Right, exactly. We don't need that. That's, we just, deal with, that's just for knowledge only, then, right? Right. Okay. We deal with the V I M X. Right, right, right. We pick or we pick to pick. Right. Okay, try to get along with that picture, okay? You will be hitting to that when you start working at the lab. It's also scope working the same way. You get a new scope, they get information. They get telling you how to do what to do. Okay? There can be a minor difference. Okay, now we go to dial. Basically, dial. That's what they carrying you that is uh, um let's see uh, just a You already download the antenna, right? You must be get the download ready. Okay. The diode they call a rectification. Okay, now what that means, rectification. AC to DC. Rectification mean converting. B, C, Q, A, A, C. Okay. And that is the physical. 
for the diode. The diode taken using silicon material or the menu, okay? But they will be working the same, different voltage. Now, for the diode, they get a one side, they call a P type, contain positive. And another one, they call a N type, contain negative, electrical. Okay, that basically semiconductor diode. And later on, you can see this part right here. They call it depletion region. Okay, so for the diode, allow the current flow through it. That means they allow the negative electron able to moving to the P type. If this electron cannot move it, that means diode cannot conduct it, no current flow, okay? And when you're working on the schematic, you see this symbol, diode symbol. A means anode, C means cathode. And the voltage from A to C, that's what we call a VD. VD means diode voltage. And we know they will be equal VA minus VC. Okay? So VD basically voltage across the diode. Okay? Diode normally permit electron current flow only in one direction. That means diode will be allowed current flowing only one way from A to C, not C to A. That's only one direction. Now, they get an ideal approximation, okay? This is the diode symbol. Ideal telling you what? Ideal mean VD equal zero volt, okay? So, they will be allowed the current flowing from this side to this side. That's what they call forward buyer. When they allow the current flow, like the contact flow here, current flow through it. And the other one, if they not allow current flowing from A node to the cathode here, so the diode will be open, reverse bias, okay? They say reverse bias, the diode will be off. So we get two things. You say diode on, that means they allow current flowing from A to see. Diode off means they open inside, no current flowing. Okay. Open circuit, that means open. No current flow from A to C. Resistance from A to C will be infinity O. That means they get a big resistance here. That's why current cannot flow it. Basically, you will be deal with a second approximation. Same thing, okay? You can get A here, C here. 
when forward buyer, we can say they will be on. What happened? They will be on. That means the voltage across the diode will be 0 0.7 volt. Okay, now diode on. For silicon, diode. V day zero point seven volt. However, if they are using the manual, then V day. Zero point three volt. Okay, so if the diode using the silicon diode, then when they turn it on, that means the voltage at A higher than the voltage at C, zero point seven volt. Then they allow the current flowing from A to C. However, for germanium diode, they only need 0 0.3, okay? And also, if V from A, V at A, okay? Less than 0 0.7, and diode now will be open. That's what revert buyer or that will be up. So when you try to work in with a dial, first thing you have to know is it they on or they off. If you don't know they on or they off, cannot solve the problem. Okay, any question up to that point? If not, now we'll see. For this circuitry here, what they want? They say calculate diode, first thing they asking diode on or off. They're using the silicon. VD is equal to 0.7 volt. Okay, tell me. For this circuitry, diode on or off? On. On. How do we know they are? This uh, forward bias? That's a different way to talking about on. You can say they be forward bias. But my question is how do we know they will be on? Before we try to do that one, I want to ask you thing. That one first. Telling me for this circuitry here, what we are equal? 10 volts. 
Plan four. That is correct. But how? What is the current flow here? Is it zero because um, one one lead would be up top, another lead would be down the bottom on the ground, so, but it would treat that like an open circuit. So open circuit is zero and zero times 10 is zero. So uh, th that the current would be zero. Okay, now this is the open circuit, right? Right. So that's why current cannot flow. So the current equals zero. So it's the same, even though it's got the 1K resistor there, it's the same as measuring directly across the, the 10 volt battery, correct? Right, but the thing is now, I want to know V of the 1K. V across 1K equal what? Zero. Zero. Yeah. The thing is, they could be I times 1K, but I equal zero. Okay? So they not drop anything wanted across 1K. So this side is 10 volt, and the other side have to be the same 10 volt. The thing is, no voltage drop across the 1K. Okay, now. Hey, Mr. Pam, can I ask a question real quick? Yeah. On your, on, on your uh, problem number one, looking at the schematic, is it proper to look at the battery and say, okay, the top of the battery is plus. So you go all the way around to the resistor and then that's plus minus. And then you go all the way around to the diode and that's plus minus. Is that proper? You mean for the plus here, minus here, right? And you know, data current flow here, right? In other words, I guess what I was asking, can you put the, are, are we allowed to put the plus minuses around the, the resistor and the diode? And then that would help you tell if the diode is more positive at the anode or no, negative. No, not that. Now, you understand current flow this way. All right. So they're telling you you get positive here. Right. And negative here. Right. Current coming in, positive leaving, negative. And that will be telling you the current flowing that one, right? Going no, down. But I, but I'm, my, my question is just everything is fine, just like you got it. My, my question is at the anode at the top, can you put a, just for a polarity, can you put like positive and then net, yeah, positive there and then negative there? Is that okay? That's okay. However, right now, you have to tell me the diode on or off foot. John. On. How? Explain to me. How do you say it's on? Because the anode, the big part of the diode is more positive than the than the uh, cathode, and that's what determines forward bias and reverse bias. No. I agree they will be on. However, who can tell me? How do I know they will be on? Okay, I can give you a little more. If they on the voltage here, that means VD, right? Yeah. Must be greater than, correct? Right. They must be greater than 0 0.7 volt for the silicon. 
Now, who can explain to me? You say it on. How come? How come they own? You have to prove. Oh, is it because you got so much? Is it because you you have a voltage drop across the resistor and the rest is across the diode, which is 0 0.7? So, so the upper part where it says V out is greater than the bottom part where, where the ground is at. No, it's not quite. If I say, I can get resistor into 100 mega ohm. So that means different. If you that change that to 100 mega ohm, then you have almost no current flow. Yeah, no current flow, that means the diode cannot be on. Right. So that's why I said, my question is you telling me, you say diode on, I agree. Prove it. How? So it's uh, 0.7 minus zero, because ground is zero. <laughs> huh, huh. That's why the guy can be in the program for, you know, a while, and you still cannot answer my question. Now I tell you. What thing? You must support no diode here. What we out? Ten volts. Ten volts. All right. And 10 volt greater than 0 0.7, right? Yes. So that's why I ought on. If you do not agree with me, let me know. Okay. Well, thing. You have to support you don't have a diode in this circuit. No diode here. Then you can see how what voltage you get here. In this case, I get 10 volt without the diode. In order for the diode on, then the voltage across the diode have to be greater than 0 0.7. So that's why. I say diode will be on. When they on, you remove the diode, put the battery, substitute for the diode with the value 0 0.7 volt. Okay, that's what you have to do. If you say the diode on, and now you substitute the diode by the battery. And the value will be 0 0.7 volt for silicon. That's the first thing. You have to know. You say on. And now you must be substitute diode by the battery. Okay, the next question, what V out equal? What V out equal? 10 volts. Hmm. Okay. Now, v, out, yeah. v, v out is going to equal 10 minus 0 0.7, right? 
<laughs> Who else? Yeah, the guy. Oh, to... no, it's 0 0.7. 0 .7. <laughs> Because you said you got 0 0.7 there. OK, I'm telling you. All right. Now, you see everyone get the car. You get a battery, the 12 volt. You want to measure the car battery, you take the meter. You connect positive to the red and negative to the right. They will be telling you 12 volt or a little higher. Even that battery connect in to the circuitry of your car. However, when you measure the voltage across the battery, you get that battery voltage. Okay, so now when I say the diode on, you get substitute diode by the battery here, 0 0.7. Now, if you take the meter to measure from here to the round, you suppose you get that 0 0.7 volt. Okay, so now you get and now they want to calculate the current through the resistor. Oh, that's why I messed that up. The, the current through the resistor is going to be 10 minus 0 0.7 divided uh, by 1K. 0 0.7 volt here now. Okay, you get a 10 volt, you get a 0 0.7 volt. That's right. Current I will be the different 10 volt minus 0 0.7 volt, right? Right, divide by 1K. Divide by 1K. Then they want V voltage across the resistor here. You already know the current I. So V R. I time 1K. After you get I. Okay, for this problem. Any question? Anything I can so I just wanted to clarify when there's a diode in the circuit when we're finding I or when we're finding any part of the circuit, we have to include diode as a subtraction of the uh, voltage. Okay. When you see the diode, if you want to solve any problem, anything. You must be no diode on or diode on. Without that, you cannot do anything. Then the next step, if the diode on, then you must be substitute diode by the battery. And the value will be 0 0.7 volt for silicon or 0 0.3 for the manual. That's the second. Okay, thank you. And now you say the diode off. That means they substitute by open circuitry at that diode. Okay? Mr. Fam, just one last thing. So then the, the voltage drop across the limiting resistor is 9.3. Is that correct? 9.3 milliamp. No, no, no. I'm saying the voltage drop across the 1K is 9.3. Okay. So basically, you can get the 9.3 volt. Okay. 
same thing. If you get the I, the thing is V across R limit equal V by it minus V out. Okay. 10 minus 0 0.7, you get 9.3. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, if you get the current, you still can calculate the I time R limit. It's still the same, 9.3. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so the R limit resistor shows about 9.435 on the simulator for voltage drop. And then uh, you have about 564.7 millivolts going through the diode. So it almost meets <laughs> the diode on requirement. That's based on the simulator, Mr. Fram. I can show uh, you. Simulation, that means they gave you everything. Yeah, it's uh, to, to look at to look at it, it's really questionable, but based off of what you're teaching, yeah, you're what you're saying is correct. But the thing is my asking for understanding. The thing is when you're working at work, you cannot simulate it. Little act require your knowledge. Okay. We can't bring the lab bolt. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is right at this point, I can tell you. They get the simulation program. For no matter what type of circuitry you run simulate, they're telling you all current, every one that they need. So basically, technician, okay, we don't have to do like in the college, they put into the equation, solving the equation to get the value. That basically not for technician, okay? Before they don't have a simulation, then they have to do calculation. At work, you just following the instruction from engineering. Okay? They're telling you, measure at this point what they want the voltage. If you measure and you cannot get the voltage they wanted, something wrong with the circuitry, your job, fix it. Okay? Hey, Mr. Okay. Pam, can we get you to circle those answers so when you look at the uh, tape, it'll be on there? So it's dial on, you have to circle that. V out is 0.7. The current is 9.3 milliamps. And the voltage across R is 9.3 volts. Right. If, you could, if you could write that on there for the, for the, when you look at, when we look at the tape. Okay. I can write give it. you a key point. Diode on. Diode on. V out, out is 0 0.7. Current is 9.3 milliamps. 9.3. V across power, 9.3. 3 volt. Right. That way, when we look at the tape, if we have to look at the tape, it'll be on there as an example. Okay. Okay, any questions? Otherwise, we may see you guys tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Night. Thank you, Mr. Fam. Good night. No problem. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,